have to create your own worker for this legal entity, but in order to speed things up, I just add a new employment for the same worker. That means this person is going to be a member of Seahorse Retailer. I start the employment just starting today. I hire that person, I create an employment, and now this person is a member of two different companies. That would be a good example of having uh, or dealing with different contractors because a worker concept could be relating to an actual employee or, or a contractor. So I click close. Now you notice that if I go ahead and look at the employees, uh, Jody is up here. Or you can have take a look at both, obviously, employee or contractor. Anyhow, I select this person and I select the checkbox, which is as said approved. That means has transaction been approved or not? I, if you select this, then obviously is approved for it. Otherwise, it has to go through the process of approval. If I do a validation again, it gives me the same message. So this message is a bit different. That means this voucher number is not properly set. So what I do, we need to go back to general ledger. Uh, you have to go back to actually journal names. And this voucher, for some reason, cannot uh, giving you the next value. So what I do in order to save some time, I just directly go to the view detail and create a brand new one just for future demonstration as well. I don't have to be having any issue with it. So I call this C and I call it NS. It stands for number sequences. We have already had a session about this. I use it as a shared. I don't care about anything else. I add a segment, let's say, and uh, let's put, for example, just to use the alphanumeric in this scenario. So I set this to be continuous, so I don't have to deal with issues with the number sequences in this belt. I save this and click close. So instead of this, I use C. Let's go back and recreate this scenario. Uh, unfortunately, I have to delete this. It, I have to actually delete the whole uh, journal and do that again. I set it to the wrong one. Let's verify. I already have a journal. I just switch to lines. You see, note by the way, this is in use. Anytime you see this, that means somebody else is opening this up, so you can't use it really. But you can check the blocking and say who has used it. So obviously, I use it myself. So there we go. I click new, and uh, it still is not picking it up. So delete this journal and recreate it. Go back to lines. It should now give me a new number. You see, that's what I was referring to. Even though I assigned it properly, it wouldn't pick it up unless you would have created a brand new journal. Because it's like the logic behind it. You create a journal, and then uh, the voucher forms get opened up, and it start reading from a number sequence. So that is my voucher from now. OK, let's start this from scratch. GP pound, invoice one, two, three. This is a transaction text and then 500 pounds and indeed I use an offset account for it so there you go and I say this is let's say for project operation needless to say on the invoice tab I mentioned that you have to have an employee I've already set that up so I just use it and now let's go and once more take a look at the cash discount and in case if you have multiple cash discounts how breaking it down and obviously when I validate this Everything's okay now. So let's take a look at this first. Do you have a financial dimension here as well in case you would like to set some financial dimension for some of the values? Obviously, this financial dimension, it becomes a default financial dimension for the vendor. So you could set that up within a vendor or you could set it up here. But that has no effect at the moment due to my uh, structure. If I post this, I'm registering and recording this vendor at the moment. So when I post this, if I click close, you can view this information in two different ways. I can go back to the general ledger and click on edit trail and as you see I did that within accounts payable but the record is available right here within the general ledger. If I go to the voucher transactions you can actually tell okay this is the offset account and this is the summary account which is the payables. So that means I'm liable to pay that much to this vendor. Also as I noted before this is going to be your accounting currency which is going to be in euro and let's say this is the uh, reporting currency, which is the USD. So you see it in three different currencies, and you have exchange rates for each. So that would be British pound, the accounting currency, the main currency, and as well as the reporting currency. So if I click close, go back to the payable, take a look at the vendor, GB Publishing. You can also take a look at invoices here. And as you see, it shows that via journal entries, 
you already have entered and registered one system and then you can click on the transaction and as you can tell it's actually showing you that you have registered and posted one invoice it is invoice actually you haven't paid for it yet that would be the next discussion you could also take a look at the transactions from here that would have given you the same thing and from here you could have take a look at the voucher so many ways in order to retrieve the data let's go pay for it so there are many ways to do it you could take a look at the invoice and create an invoice from here same thing you could have just gone to the invoice register from here from the vendor side or you could have just started paying for it uh, by selecting uh, the payment journal since I showed you one way let's actually while we're at it let's start from here let's show you the second scenario invoice register the second scenario shows that don't have a right to post you have to post it against the pool and then you can go ahead and have somebody else to fetch those vouchers and uh, post them so in this scenario again I need to have a journal name let's go back and do this opens up the journal names in general ledger I call this invoice register I choose invoice register I use my own number sequence so I don't have any issues down the road while I'm added actually let's go ahead and make other journal names as well I call this accounts payable pay for the payment there is a value here called vendor disbursement that means you are going to pay for it that would be for the payable and then of course I use the same number okay so I just wanted to save some time I click close go back here to the R, which is the registration of the invoice I click on lines opens up and you see the difference here you don't have a right to change the account type anymore you are forced to use a vendor that means you have less permission less rights so you just can pick up let's say one of these accounts and then specify a vendor invoice ID like one two three four the transaction text is shared so you could use that and then when I tab over again it's going to suggest the credit of course you probably ask why do I have a debit because probably you would like